Hey guys, it's Uncle Nightshift and I need to tell you something. I've been building models for 22 years since I was 6 and armor models since I was 12. But in all those years I haven't built a tiger, like seriously. The most famous tank in the world and I never had any interest in it. But hey, I think it's finally time to change that. So grab yourself some strong German beverage and let's see how this goes. <laughs> Alright, the truth is, I already started building this model and I made two videos about it, but let's take it one step at a time and start at the very beginning. So, the main protagonist is the Ryefield model's Tiger 1 Gruppe... Ferman. Gruppe Ferman. <laughs> this was an armored squad consisting of several hybrid Tigers which were built from different damaged tanks. And there were also a few Panthers. The kit is definitely great value for your money because they give you two types of road wheels, workable plastic tracks, a lot of photo edge details including tool clasps and some, <laughs> and, and some other things like Zimmerit applicators, different gun mantlets, metal toe cables and also a lot of spare parts like jerry cans and some extra tools. The quality of the kit is somewhere in the middle, because some details are quite rough around the edges, but nothing that couldn't be assembled. And the whole package comes at around 44 and a half euros. Then I obviously bought a set of metal tracks from Furl Model, because I'm a modeling snob. And these are the late type, because even though the Tiger had the early type hull, the running gear was late type. And it cost me about 30 euros, I think, yeah. Then of course a nice set of photo edge details from Voyager, because these are much better than the photo edge from the kit, and there are also a lot more details, 25 euros. And I also got myself some extra bling like metal antenna mount from RB model and gun barrel from the same brand, but I don't remember how much I paid for these because I bought them about 4 years ago. But I guess it was something like 3 and 9 euros. So, this project actually started a few years ago, but it also ended after a few days because I got frustrated with my poor excuse for a Zimmerit. I actually already did some improvements in the previous two videos, so I'm gonna make a quick recap and if you've already seen them, you can skip to this time code. And if you haven't, I'll leave their links in the description and they'll also pop up in the upper right corner. So, getting back to this model meant removing a lot of stuff, like for example the weld beads because I enjoy making new ones, but also because a lot of them didn't look very authentic. The Zimmerid had to go as well because it was truly atrocious and it was bringing back some bad memories, so yeah. And of course I had to scribe some new world lines in a few places. And then I could finally start to actually improve the model. First I added the flame cut texture on most armor plates, and the reason why I'm saying on most and not all is because some of them were machined and their cross sections were totally smooth, which is actually a pretty interesting detail if you ask me. And then I stippled the armor plates with small amounts of liquid cement to create lots of randomly placed pits and imperfections, which I then covered with a mixture of Tamiya putty and glue. After it was all dry I gently sanded the texture down. When it was all done I welded every plate with Tamiya epoxy putty and some custom made weld texturing tools. Weld beads are kinda my thing, like, I don't know. I enjoy making them and I also like how they make the model look heavier. Yeah, well, anyway. The real tiger has seen a lot of action so I added multiple shell impacts. The historical photos which I'm using as a reference show only one impact on the turret, but then again they don't reveal that much, so here I'm mostly going with some written information which I found in a magazine and… actually we'll get to that in a moment. Ok, so now I was able to make the new Zimmerit, which was extremely damaged and this time I decided to go the extra mile and I replicated the pattern in Photoshop using the historical photos. I used some artistic license here and made some of the shapes more… you know, 
aesthetically pleasant, but overall it should be pretty accurate. As for the remaining sites, I again used some creative license here, aka I mostly took inspiration from other tigers. I'd also like to talk a little bit more about that magazine, which I also used as a reference. So, it's an old article which was published in AFB Modeler issue 18, and I purchased it from the AFB Modeler digital archive. The model was built by Jens Kronwald Fredriksen, and it seems to me like he did a lot of research about the subject, and probably even had more photos of this tank than I have. But... I didn't want to make a shameless copy of his model, so I only used his written information as my reference and just... You know, interpreted it my own way. He also has a very plausible theory about how this tank was painted, and I'm gonna paint it the exact same way, but that's a story for the next video, so make sure you'll drop by the next week. Alright, so with the Zimmerit done, we can move on to the running gear. Here's an interesting detail I wanted to point out. Um, basically, you can glue the transmission covers in place like on any other model, but the interesting thing is how the drive sprockets just snap into place. And also the idle wheel swing arms can be dry fitted without any glue, which will come in super handy later when I need to adjust the track tension. The suspension is workable, but you still have the option to make it static, or... More accurately, that's how it comes from the box. If you want it to move, you need to remove these knobs. And I don't need a functioning suspension, but I want to make my Tiger sit on its back. Which was a common thing on older tanks, which I've seen a lot of action, and their torsion bars kinda... lost their strength. So I glued the rearmost swing arms in the position where they touch the bottom out bumper. This is kinda exaggerated, but I wanted to make the effect clearly visible. And to make the front swing arms equally high, I used a piece of styrene as a spacer. The remaining swing arms were glued freely, and while they were still movable, I lined them up with a straight edge. Now the suspension is perfectly aligned, so I won't have any levitating road wheels, which was a common issue on my older models, but nowadays I try to pay more attention to this. And now the wheels. The kit gives you both versions, so early mid with rubber cladding and late steel type. The tank which I'm building is photographed with its running gear disassembled, but using the photo of F01, which was another hybrid tiger from the same squad, I chose the late type. Basically all Furman or Furman tigers <laughs> were upgraded with late type wheels and tracks. And it's a curious little detail to have an early type hull with late running gear. And just like on the previous model, aka the Hucha, I dry fitted the two inner rows and then I glued them together. This will make handling and painting a million times easier and also more fun. I use the gel type super glue because the gaps between them are pretty large and to make the process faster I also used CA activator which is this cool little spray can that makes super glue dry instantly like like that. Now I'm carefully trying if it's all set, and it is. Alright, moving on. So the third row was glued in place with regular liquid cement, and the outermost row was just dry fitted in place, because I want those wheels removable for easier painting and weathering. You know, so I can easily get behind them. The two inner rows will be practically invisible, so overall this method of gluing wheels together has a lot of benefits, and I can highly recommend it to every one of you German armor people. The last component of the running gear are tracks, and these are the late type from Frural model. I chose them over the workable plastic ones because these won't fall apart like... immediately. And they also don't need 5 parts for one track link, even though they still needed some work, like for example drilling out on both ends, also a few guiding teeth had to be reopened, 
also these casting remnants had to be sliced off and this last one is more of a small detail but basically tiger tracks got worn out fairly quickly and in an interesting way because basically i had to remove the ice cleats but only from the inner side um, i think this irregular wear was the result of weight distribution through the wheels or something i don't know i guess all right now we have the tracks ready for assembly and as usual i ditched the provided brass wire and instead made a simple jig from styrene sheets which i used to cut equal lengths of copper wire which is much easier to cut with a knife the assembly is very easy because we have reopened the holes on each link and we also have pre-cut pieces of wire which won't protrude from the track and it also won't be too short I mean, they won't be too short. Um, it might all seem like tedious and boring work, um, but, you know, if you put on some movie or some podcast, you'll have them done in no time. Well, no, actually. It'll, it'll still take a few hours, but you won't even notice. So now, once I got them done, I connected the last and first link with a slightly longer wire, so I can easily disconnect and reconnect them later while painting and weathering. And thanks to the moving idler wheel, I can adjust their tension. And the result? Oh yeah! Okay, let's now move on a little higher. The metal gun barrel fits somewhat loosely, so I had to use a lot of strong super glue, but even that wasn't enough. So I filled the gap with black super glue, like a lot of it. And then I cleaned the excess with the bonder. The gun was still a little wonky, so I had to leave it to dry overnight. Also, even though I said in the previous video that the spare tracks were removable, I decided to leave them super glued in place. Uh, I just think it'll be easier this way, and maybe I can make a video about painting them while they are attached to the model. I don't know, what do you think? Another interesting feature on the F-13 are the smoke discharger mounts. They were originally welded to the turret, but later when those guys were upgrading the tank they were like, hey, we don't need those anymore, so they just cut them off with a blowtorch. I obviously have to add the well detail around them, but I like to add those once the whole turret is done, so I can mix a small amount of putty and use it on everything, but anyway. At this point I felt like it was the perfect time to add some photo edge details, although there are like 6 of them on the turret, so we'll explore the segment in more detail once we move on to the hull. So. The last major thing I did on the turret was adding some extra detail to the spare track holders. It's actually kind of funny when I call this a major thing since they're so small and nobody will ever notice them, but still. Each one of them had these like small handles and the only way I could bend 7 identical pieces was in a surgical forceps, because they have these small teeth inside which I used as a guide and then I cut them to the same length, and because I had no guide for that, I had to make about 12 copies to get 7 identical ones, which was a bit frustrating and made me want to give up a couple of times, but yeah, well, then I super glued them in place with this strong clear super glue, which dries very fast, and because the bond wasn't very clean, I then applied a bigger amount of black rubber super glue around them, almost like a, like a wash. You know, I just let it flow around each handle and when it was dry I cleaned up the excess with debonder. And if that wasn't enough, I also added small circles punched from a tin foil. <laughs> from a tin foil at both ends of each hinge because you can clearly see the pivots on the real thing. And because this was the last detail on the turret, I now mixed a small blob of epoxy putty and added the weld beads around all those small parts, including the smoke discharger mounts, which I kinda forgot to film. <laughs> but anyway, let's now move on to the hull. 
Here I started with the exhausts, which are molded with the flaps in a closed position, which was only done if the tank was crossing a river, and they were not used on every tank, so I removed them and drilled out the opening. I wanted to make the cover from wires and photo edge, because the plastic part is totally out of scale, but I just wasn't able to assemble it properly. So, in the end I drilled their location points all the way through, so I could slide the wires inside. Thanks to this there's no chance of breaking them, and I can also adjust their height. Adding the metal top plate was now much easier, and after some adjusting I ended up with this. And the bolts on top are again punched from a tin foil. And I'm also leaving them removable, not only so I can paint them separately, but also so I can get behind them while weathering the backplate. At this point I wanted to include some stock-ish footage of me gluing photo edge details to the model, but then I realized I wouldn't have enough footage for the video. Because uh, the thing about photo edge details is that they're kind of fiddly and are very hard to film while I'm bending and assembling them. But I tried to figure out something which you might find useful. So, for example, the air intake mesh screens from Voyager have much finer detail than the ones provided in the kit. This is good not only because, you know, better detail, but also I was able to add some damage more easily. They were often bent inside from when people walked on top of them, and also they were usually torn from shrapnel. The tow cable and gun cleaning rod clasps were solid pieces of metal, and they were not hollow like this. So I stuffed them with epoxy putty, and then I kind of... sculpted it into shape, so it can look like a one piece, while also trying to keep the wind nuts movable. And the gun cleaning rods? This is how they come in the kit, which... which is actually pretty okay, but... I wanted to add some extra character to my model, so I cut them from brass tubing of the same diameter, aka 0.9mm, and of course I had to clean the edges with a file, and then I made the threaded parts from a piece of styrene. These were then super glued inside, and once the super glue was fully cured, I ended up with this. And yeah. Now I can actually assemble them like the real deal. I mean, how cool is that? Obviously there's one small detail missing, because they were made out of wood, and there were these metal sleeves on both ends, which were slightly thicker, but I was just too lazy to replicate that. So I'll have to make the illusion with paint later on. But that's not everything, I also tried filming how to bend and assemble those tiny, dreadful tool clasps. <laughs> because people get often intimidated by them, but they're actually not that hard to assemble, it just takes forever. So bending them is probably the easiest part, and most of the time you can bend them by hand. And this is actually when having slightly longer fingernails can come in handy, but... Yeah, overall, when it comes to small photo edge, this is usually how I bend them. Now, putting them together is slightly trickier, and I'm gonna use the power of post-production to speed it up, but usually the hardest part is to snap them together. But once you get lucky, you're all set. Just press them tightly against one another, and they won't fall apart. They'll just stay like that forever. And they'll be also workable, so you can position them in any way you like. Open, or closed, or something else. It might take you one entire evening to get them all done, and it's up to you to decide if it's worth it, but in my case I had no choice, because this tiger supposedly had almost no tools on board. Except the most important ones, which are the gun cleaning rods and the fire extinguisher. I also added the crowbar, because painting details in natural steel finish is always fun, and it also adds some extra color to the model. Also, if you've seen the previous video about Zimmerit, then you remember how I glued those pieces of styrene where the tool clasps will be. <laughs> 
My reasoning for that was so they wouldn't be sunken in the Zimmerit, but instead stand out like on the real tank, which in my case wasn't possible because I haven't figured out how to make the Zimmerit thin enough while still making it look three-dimensional. And I also used those pieces to mark out the position of each clasp. And in the end, I think it worked out pretty well. Now that I mentioned the fire extinguisher, I decided to go cheap on this one and I stolen the plastic part from a dragon kit because the original part has very heavy detail and it's also quite oversized. And because the photo etched part was designed around it, it's out of scale as well. But I think once it's painted, it'll look just as good. I even ordered a set of decals for it. I just hope it'll get here in time. Anyway, just like on the turret, I left the weld beads for the very end. There should be tiny welds around the photo edge tool clasps as well. <laughs> But you might notice that I sort of try to replicate them with the black super glue because on the real tank they're barely noticeable, but at the same time they're still there. Um, and as for the larger ones, I actually honestly expected there would be more, but hey, I'm not complaining. And while I was adding those final touches, I figured why not add some casting numbers. These are from Archer and they're like three-dimensional decals, which means they're also quite stiff. So they need a lot of decal setting solutions and also a little bit of brute force. While they look very nice and all, they were not so pronounced on the real tank compared to, let's say, Soviet vehicles. So to make them less obvious, like, you know, to get their obviousness to a normal level, I stippled some Mr. Surfacer 500 on top of them and then carefully wiped it off from the numbers themselves. By now I was ready to take final photos of the finished model, but then I noticed that the spare track holder which I made from copper sheet, well, this thing is actually included in the original photo edge that comes with the kit and it obviously looks much better and it's also stiffer, so off you go. And I quickly bent the new one into shape, and I mean quickly like I had my photo setup all fired up, lights on, but I still had to make this one final detail. Um, I also made a small penetration because coincidentally the bracket aligns with one of the shell impacts I made on the glacis plate. This part actually makes me slightly sad because I really like how the Zimmerit turned out on this part and I have to cover it up with spare tracks because all Furman Tigers had them. But other than that, I guess that's it. That's it like the model is built and ready for painting, but also that's it like I'm now officially a real armor modeler, because as they say, you're not a real modeler if you haven't built a tiger. And if you haven't built a tiger yet, then make sure to follow my example and become a real modeler today by building a tiger and subscribing if you haven't yet. Well, to be fully honest with you, subscribing probably won't make you the most real modeler in all of history, like, immediately, but maybe it will, uh, I don't know. But what I do know is that I'd really appreciate it because it'll help me a lot. And also, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by giving it a like and leaving a nice comment, such as... I don't know, something that includes the word kitty, because, you know... Tiger is a cat. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let me say a big thank you for getting all the way to the end of this video, and also a big thank you to my generous patrons. If you'd like to take your night shift experience to the next level with almost daily photo updates from my workbench, one week early ad free videos, and super large super HD photos of each model, and also just being able to chat with me through messages and talk about anything you'd like, or to get the chance to drop a bomb on me by pointing out the machine gun barrel is turned in the wrong direction, then consider checking it out, because you can join them for as little as one dollar a month and it helps to keep this channel going forward. Alright, 
so thanks again and i hope i'll see you the next week because we're about to paint this tiger in the weirdest paint scheme you've ever seen and it's even weirder because it's real or it was real or at least i think it was real anyway that's all i wanted to say so i wish you an amazing weekend or day or evening depending on when you're watching this and I'll see you mates in the next one. And here are some bloopers. I've been building models for 22 years since I was six and are... Sure. So this project actually started a few years ago, but it also ended after a few days because I got... Com <laughs> The historical photos which I'm using as reference show only one impact on the turret. <laughs> the tow cable and gun cleaning rod clasps were solid. <laughs> clasps. 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 Gun cleaning rod clasps. Clasps. <laughs> Tool clasps. <laughs>